Get your credit cards ready, because today we're headed to GNC for some serious gains. That's right, today we're talking about Formula Mass. Hit the theme. Ain't nothing but a cam thing, baby. Too flipped out, teachers going crazy. Lancaster is a district that pays me. Unbreakable, so please don't try to break it. this. But uh, back to the lecture at hand. Hello and welcome to another episode of Shu Fu Kaminasha. I'm your host, Fu, and with me as always is Shu. Shu know it. So in the last couple of episodes, we talked about how to write formulas from names and get names from formulas. And today we're going to learn how to find the mass of those chemical formulas. So let's get started. Formula mass, a lesson from the formulas and equations unit. What is formula mass? The total mass in U of a chemical formula. We must take into account the atomic masses of each element in the formula and the number of atoms of each element. We will use the convention of rounding all atomic masses to the hundredths place. Two decimal places! How do I find the formula mass? One, write the chemical formula from the name. Two, list each element along with the number of atoms of that element and its atomic mass. Three, multiply the number of atoms of each element by its atomic mass. Four, add all calculated values to obtain the formula mass in U. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna do an example of here of how to calculate formula mass. Shoot, are you ready? I'm ready. All right, we're gonna find the formula mass of sodium sulfates. We have a name, we need a formula. So let's get that first. All right, so sodium is Na, and it's in group one. It has only one oxidation state, plus one. Sulfate with its ending is a polyatomic ion. That is on table E. It's SO4 minus two. And when I put those together, I get Na2SO4. Good, balance those charges. All right, so now we're gonna take all of the elements that are in that compound. We're gonna kind of list them vertically in order. All right, so I've got Na, S, and O. All right, so the next column right next to those, we're gonna write down how many atoms of each of those elements we have in that formula. All right, so just looking at the subscripts, I've got two Na's, just an assumed one for S, and four oxygen. All right, we're getting there. So the next part we're gonna write next to those numbers, we're gonna have to go to our pair tables first because we need their atomic masses. Okay. All right. So, so let's I, find sodium. Sodium right here. And what's its atomic mass? It says 22.98977. It's a lot of decimal places. Remember, in this class, you can round it two decimal places. Make your life easier. Well, it looks like I can round up. So 22.99. Good, all right, so sodium is one. The next one was sulfur. Let's look up that element. All right, sulfur is 32.065 for its atomic mass. Okay, so to two decimal places that would be? That would also round up, so 32.07. Good, and the last one was oxygen. All right, another long one, 15.9994. Okay, so to two decimal places, this one is? Okay, so if I go to two decimal places, it rounds up. Uh, I guess it would just, Round all the way up to 16, so 16.00. Good, let's keep those zeros, good. So we're gonna go back, we're gonna put those numbers in, those rounded numbers. All right, and I'm multiplying here, right? Good. All right. So, so 22.99 was our mass for sodium. And what, does that have a unit? There's no units on the period. Remember, our units for atomic mass and formula mass are the same. It's U, which stands for atomic mass units. Okay, I remember that. Good. Sulfur was 32.07. And oxygen on to a nice number of 16.00. Okay, good. So you just have to multiply these all through, right? That's right. So if I do that on my calculator, I get 45. 0.98 U. This, of course, is 32.07 U, and then 64.00 U. Good. One final step to get the complete formula mass is just to add those numbers up. So I add those up, I get 142.05 U. Um, am I good just leaving it to two decimal places? It's good to two decimal places. Awesome. You try number one. Find the formula mass of barium chloride. Make sure you get a proper formula, make sure you use your reference tables, and make sure you show all your work. Hint, when finding the number of atoms of each element, distribute subscripts outside the parentheses to the subscripts inside of the parentheses. 
make sure that you distribute to all atoms within the parentheses. Let's do an example. You ready, Fu? I am. Okay, it says, what is the formula mass of barium nitrite? As we did before, we want to write the chemical formula first. Okay, so barium is Ba, and that's in group two, has a plus two charge and only a plus two charge. Uh, nitrate ends in ITE, it's a polyatomic ion on table E, that is NO2 with a minus one charge. Okay. Um, so balancing the charges out, I get B A N O two two. Looks good. All right, we're going to continue on by, as we did before, listing the elements in a column. Okay, so the first one is barium, and then nitrogen, and then oxygen. And we want to next determine the number of atoms in our formula. This is where we have to be careful. So let's get started with barium. How many? Uh, barium's just one. Good. Now, with the N and the O, notice they're in parentheses, and there's a two outside those parentheses. Okay. That means the two applies to everything within the parentheses. Gotcha. So since there's one N inside the parentheses, but the two distributes to it, there must be two Ns? Exactly. Very good. Okay. And O has two inside the parentheses, but if the two distributes to that, there must be four total. Exactly. Very good. So be all careful right. with your parentheses. Make sure you're distributing to all elements within the parentheses. Okay. All right. We can continue on as before, finding the formula mass. We need the atomic mass is rounded to two decimal places off the periodic table. Okay, so barium, if I look it up in the periodic table, it rounds to two decimal places to 137.33 U. Uh, nitrogen is 14.01 U to two decimal places. And then that oxygen is the same as before. That's always 16.00 U. Good, let's multiply through. All right, so, well, that's easy, 137.33 U, uh, 28.02. Looking good. And 64.00 U. All we have to do is add those up and get our final answer. Okay, adding them all up, I get 229.35 U. Very good. You try number two. How many total atoms are found in ammonium sulfate? Make sure you first write the chemical formula and then make sure you distribute your subscripts. Note, you don't have to find the formula mass in this question. What is a hydrate? It's an ionic compound that contains water as part of its crystal lattice structure. These formulas use a dot to represent the connection between the ionic compound and the water. Note, the ionic compound is named normally, followed by the word hydrate. A prefix is used to specify the number of water molecules. Pretty crystals. I just love CuSO4-5H2O. How do I find the formula mass of a hydrate? You write the formula of the hydrate from the name. List each element along with the number of atoms of that element and its atomic mass. List water molecules after the elements along with the coefficient as the number of water molecules and the formula mass of water, which is 18.02 U. Add all the calculated values to obtain the formula mass in U. Do not multiply! All right, we're going to do an example of the formula mass of a hydrate. Shu, are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. All right, what is the formula mass of copper 2 sulfate pentahydrate? So let's get that formula. It's quite a name. It is. All right, so copper 2 means copper has to be plus 2. Good. Sulfate ending in ATE means it's a polyatomic. I can look on table E. I see that it's SO4 minus 2. Um, so let's just put those together, right? Good. First, I get CuSO4. And then it says pentahydrate, so that means there's water in there. So I use a little dot to show the water is attached to the ionic structure. And penta means five, so I should just have five water molecules. Perfect. All right, so let's follow our steps for writing out the formula mass. Okay, so I want to start by listing the elements in a column. And the rules were a little different for water. They said to do water molecules, 
like all together, like we're gonna one thing. Keep it all together. It's gonna streamline this process. Here. Okay. Um, what do I have to do next? So now we're gonna find out how many elements there are in all of it. We're also gonna keep uh, the water molecules. Uh, think of them as one whole thing. So that that coefficient's gonna help us there. Okay. So I see that I have one Cu, one S. I have four O's, and looking at this coefficient here, I have five water molecules together. Perfect. So now we have to look up their masses. Okay. So this would be right off of the periodic table. So looking at that, I see that Cu is 63.55U. Sulfur is 32.07U. Oxygen is 16.00U. And then it's just sort of given right out of the notes, right? It's not on the periodic table. Water is 18.02U. Yeah, water's got 16 for that one oxygen and two 1.01s for hydrogen, so 18.02 is always the mass for water. All right, so it looks like I just gotta multiply through here. And these numbers are staying the same. This is 64. And for water, we get 90.10. And I just add them all up at the end, right? Yes, we've got every part of that hydrate, so all you gotta do is add it up. Do not multiply! 249.72, you should be my final answer. You try number three. What is the formula mass of barium chloride dihydrate? Don't forget to get the proper formula first. Use your reference tables to look up proper atomic masses and show all your work. What is the gram formula mass? It's the total mass in grams of a chemical formula. We often abbreviate this as GFM. Now it's found the exact same way as formula mass, but with different units. So process wise, you're gonna do the same thing we've been doing throughout this lesson, and you're just gonna change the units to grams instead of U. You try number four. Find the GFM of dinitrogen pentoxide. Again, write your formula, show all your work, looking up atomic masses, on your periodic table, but this time using the unit's grams. Well, that's gonna do it for today's episode on formula mass. It's been emotional. Promotional consideration by... My first fire. Explore the wonders of fire lighting. Includes an 18 inch fire ring, a 12 inch poker, four Endura logs, and an eight ounce fuel can. Ages two plus. Cherry scented accelerant included. But we never off, but we zone to the break of dawn. S E I E N C E in the hall, they call S Wing. You know we never wear a tie. Like my homies, boys, two men, it's so hard to say goodbye. Like, like this, that, and this, and a. It's like that, and like this, and like that, and a. It's like this. You're going in low power mode. Plug in, chill to the next episode.